Rub up your engines! Well, you don't want to end up furious at the car, so today I'm going to tell you all about buying one of these Mitsubishi Lancer Evolutions. Now this one's an 03, first year they imported in the United States. It's set up so this little bitty 2 liter 4 cylinder engine could put out 271 horsepower. It's got a turbo and with the all wheel drive system, these aren't just front wheel drive, they're all wheel drive. There's the rear differential, you got the drive shafts going to the back wheels too. This one has a monster exhaust aftermarket system on it. These evolutions are loved by serious drivers, especially rally car drivers. Now, some people buy them mistakenly. So if you're one of those guys who wants to do burnouts all the time, you don't get one of these because they're all wheel drive. You can set them up to do burnouts, but you'll destroy the vehicle. Four wheel drive vehicles are not made for doing burnouts. It's mainly for two wheel vehicles. You could set them up that way if you wanted, but as the way they came, they're great fast rally cars. They're not something that you use to do burnouts with. Sure guys do, but they'll destroy the car, burn the clutch out in a very short period of time. They're not made for that, but they are fun to drive when they're running right. You can end up as the furious end of the Fast and Furious if you get one that's been modified incorrectly. So here's what you want to look out for. First, open hood, look around, now look at this. This has got wires, loose wires all over the place. That's a bad sign because generally sloppy wiring means sloppy all around work and this particular one no longer stock it's been modified and that was a big mistake start it up and show you why it does start right up but right off the bat when you rub it up you can tell it's not right not only does it sound wrong it's missing some but it smells, and it smells of raw gasoline. Now being a professional mechanic, I got a fancy scan tool, and it shows me that it is running too rich. But even if you don't have a scan tool, one you gotta know is you can smell that raw gas, and check this out. When you stick your finger in, not only does it come out black, but it comes out black and wet. The black shows it's running super rich in the wet gasoline. This thing is actually pumping bits of raw gasoline out the exhaust. And strangely enough, when I hook up my scan tools to it, it has no trouble coats. That shows a number two problem with Mitsubishi's is they got pretty crappy software in them. If this was a Toyota running that bad, it'd be tripping codes up the wazoo. But alas, it's not tripping any codes, it just shows that it's running too rich. This is what I see all the time. Why well, advise people not to do it? This baby originally came with a turbocharger. It was designed that way. Now granted, it's like many Mitsubishi vehicles, somewhat cheaply made, because if you look and look and look, there are no boost gauges. So you have no idea how much boost this thing is giving out. And you might think, oh, just some stupid gauge, what does that mean? It means a lot in the turbocharged cars, because then you can see, is it boosting like it should, the right amount of pressure, is it not working at all? If you got a turbo on a car, you really need a boost gauge. This does not have one. It didn't come with one. And whoever added this ridiculous typhoon intake system. So when you do have problems, it's hellacious to figure out what's wrong with these things, especially when somebody put aftermarket parts on them. And after all, it is a Mitsubishi. I've been telling people for decades, Mitsubishis are basically throwaway cars. Back in the day, a lot of Plymouth Chryslers, they imported Mitsubishi, sold them under the Chrysler brand, and that's exactly what they were. Cheaply made throwaway vehicles. They could run okay for a while, but then when they broke, they cost too much money to fix and you'd throw them away. Now I do have to applaud the engineers that made this little two liter put out 271 horsepower, but at the same time, there's very little good analytics on a stock car to figure out what goes wrong with the one that came from the factory this way. And when you start adding aftermarket stuff like cold air intakes, all that stuff, that's not factory. It didn't come with any of that stuff on. It. That's all add-on things. You're going to make attempted repairs at least three times as complex to diagnose 
and repair. And in this case, the data that comes on my computer is totally absurd. And he fool can see it's running rich. You can smell it. You saw my black finger, raw fuel in the back. Part of my computer system, my scan tool, shows that the vehicle is running rich, which is quite obvious. But at the same time, the short term and long term fuel trim, how the computer tries to make it run neither lean or rich, but in the middle, both the long and the short term fuel is adding fuel. It thinks that the thing is running lean, so it's adding fuel. It's obviously adding too much fuel to get raw fuel coming out of the exhaust. Now I saw the same exact thing on one of these a few years ago. Had a similar aftermarket cold air intake, but the owner wasn't foolish. He had kept all the old parts. So what did Scotty do? He took off all this cold air intake garbage, put on the factory plastic air box with the factory airflow sensor, hooked it up the way it was supposed to be, and it ran like a clock. Now I've checked the cooling system with my block leak test. It showed the head wasn't cracked. A simple test is just to take it off like it is now and start the engine cold. And if you saw a bunch of air bubbles coming out, that's the head gasket being blown and throwing exhaust gas through. But as you saw, it was there. They'll always rumble up and down a little. There was no fumes coming out. I knew from my a block leak test that it didn't. If you're looking at one of these when it's cold, first thing, take it off started. You see fumes come out of it as soon as you started, run away, don't buy it. And if you want to go so far, you can easily take out the spark plugs and bring a compression gauge and do compression tests and see if all the compressions are within, say, 10, 15% of each other and they all have relatively high compression if you want to go that far. But when they run as poorly as this, <laughs> My advice again is hand the key back to the owner and don't buy it. You have no idea what has been done to the vehicle. How to tell if a car you're looking at to buy has the real mileage on the odometer or whether it's got a lot more miles on it. Now he drove it over here with his X on. I don't know what that's about, but as we go inside, we can see, even though it's a 2005, it says it's only got 75,000 miles on it. And yes, there are crooked people around that will set them back. So what do you do? Well, of course, if you can get a Carfax or something that shows when it was inspected, how many miles it had on, look for oil change records, in case it comes with a book, including a card from the Lexus dealer that it was originally sold at. And this log book has mileage, oil changes, so it all fits. Started in the beginning and made it all the way up to what it's got now. But let's say it didn't have any. Well, somebody might have messed with it and cheated with the odometer reading. So what you want to do is look at the interior. Okay. Leather's still in really good shape. And look at the steering wheel. It's very clean. The leather isn't worn out. If this was all worn and frayed, you could think, boy, it's got a lot of driving. This being this clean, 75,000 miles is relatively believable. When you start it up, take it for a little spin, how does it ride? Lexuses are quiet, right? So I'll let loose of the gas here. Quiet. I don't hear any roaring wheel bearings. If it had like 172, 272,000 miles, hey, the wheel bearings would be roaring. You'd hear more noise. The steering would be sloppy in this case. Very responsive. It isn't where you're turning the wheel and nothing happens. The transmission, put it into passing gear. No hesitation. Then it shifted back up. And as we make a hard turn, we don't hear a bunch of creak and suspension parts. It's still really quiet. As we sit idling, nice smooth idle. All the lights and everything work perfectly fine. Check the windows. They all work fine. And of course, we'll plug our scan tool in. This is going to give us all kinds of information. This is going to get the mileage. The S330. And while it's running through everything, all right, we'll just take a general look around. The dash is in good shape. Now you can see the little airbag thing is wallowing out a little. And that's typical from the age. That has nothing to do with mileage. It's in the sun. It's going to be a little bit warped. That's what happens to that plastic. Like I say, the steering wheel has normal wear. It's not all worn out, showing that it's really high mileage. The elbow rust isn't worn out. The metal isn't. Totally believable that's the real mileage. This is a typical Lexus. They run great. Look, everything's green. 
There are no codes. Look at the live data stream. Now in this case, the mileage on the screen is the same as the mileage on the odometer, so it's gotta be pretty real. The airflow ratio sensors, you can see they're doing pretty good. 1.000 is perfect, pretty close to perfect. In this case, it doesn't really matter that the car is 18 years old. It's that it's only got 75,000 miles. And that's nothing on a Lexus. You can see misfire counts, one, two, three, four, five, six, zero, the whole way across the boards. No misfires at all. It's stable at 17.5 degrees, not moving at all until we rev it up, in which case it's gonna go up. You can see it's going up like it's supposed to. Then as it goes back down, it will go back down to where it was before. It takes a while for it to equilibrate. So all the data shows me the car's running perfectly and that that is indeed the real mileage on this car. Let's pop a look under the hood. We'll give it a pop. Smooth running engine. Just realized this particular engine has one downfall. It is an ES330, so it has a rubber timing belt. Unlike just about every Toyota that's ever been made, you can see this one has been changed. And it was changed at 63,000 miles. Not too long ago, 75 now, so he doesn't have to worry about it. Now, I find that interesting because some other mechanic gave him a list of things he needed to do including the timing belt and the water pump. This baby was just changed a little time ago, so the guy was ripping them off. He doesn't need to change, it was changed recently. Always check things out before you pay money for anything. Guys are always trying to sell you stuff. Doesn't need it. It was done like 13,000 miles ago and they go for easily 100,000. All the systems are green, the ABS is green, so that's gonna be working okay. It doesn't overheat. There's no obvious signs of wrecks. Okay, let's see, we got, uh, a little over two fingers on the left front. What do we have here? Same thing, a little over two fingers. Car hasn't been wrecked in the front. Anything obvious anyways. In the back, again, this is two fingers. And we'll go to the other side. And the other side, it's two fingers. So, it hasn't been all squashed in. And all the seams line up. Yeah, at some point in time, somebody's hit this and they've wrecked the paint, but it didn't break anything. That's just paint. It can be resprayed. You can get that painted over. But since that's been hit or painted before anyways, let's look in the trunk for possible wreck damage. We'll look inside. Looks pretty clean here. Let's look under here. Whistle clean, no smashes. This is how they build them. That's not repair. They're built that way so they don't leak. Got a nice spare too with an actual rim, not a fake one, the same fancy rim. They used to make these cars really well. You can see, Made in Japan. So let's close the hood, take it for a serious drive. That's an old car, so it's old school. It's got a six disc CD changer. <laughs> no backup camera, but I got the stupid marking off, got in the way. Down the road we go. They handle quite well. Combination of smoothness and decent handling. Even though this one still has the original struts on it. Just like my wife's, hers still has the original struts on it too. And it's a Lexus, so let's check out the anti-lock brakes. Yep, they don't lock up. They don't argue that. They still work perfectly fine. Take it to our little drag strip. Nobody one way, nobody the other. That's good. But today there's somebody behind us, so we will get over to the side so we won't get in their way. And now they've passed us in a Toyota. <laughs> Toyota products everywhere. Coming to our little drag strip, so nobody's behind us. And here we go. Woo, yeah, that baby still peels out. You can cruise all day long in these things. You don't get tired driving around. Looks like he got a good deal with a real 75,000 miles on the odometer. You might be surprised, but there's quite a few of these out here because there's a lot of elderly people that drive these comfortable cars. They don't put that many miles on it. And that's what he got. He got an elderly person's car who had traded it in. Strangely enough, at a Subaru dealership. Suspension's good, it doesn't pull one way or the other. Hey, I mean, this is a good car. Now, the reason he bought this, strangely enough, was he said he was looking at Camrys and Avalons, but being Toyotas, they have the image of they can last forever. They wanted a ton of money for one with really high mileage on it. And still today, some people think Lexus, it's a luxury car. It's gonna cost a fortune to repair. Now, yes, if you have the V8 Lexuses, they can be very expensive to repair. But these sixes, they don't break down all that much. And they are not 
expensive to repair compared to the V8 Lexuses at all. You got to really get specific when you're talking about car repair. For example, I get a brake master cylinder for this thing for like 160 bucks. If it was a V8, it might cost 1800 bucks for the whole modular assembly. Sixes don't have all that complex crap that they put on their luxury eights. It's got a killer sound system. There's speakers everywhere. Well, we are in Tennessee, so do you expect to have country and western playing on the speakers? That's only to be expected here. <laughs> Outlaw Field. Outlaw music. And we get on the twisties. This thing is still fun to drive. Hey, they knew what they were doing when they made these things. Plus, they don't have the complexity of a modern one. This is a basic, naturally aspirated V6 engine with a very dependable automatic transmission. Not a CVT, not a DCT, just a plain old automatic transmission that, look, plenty of power still shifts up and down perfectly fine so that is that for the road test now of course normally you will have a mechanic like me check it out before you buy not after he had somebody else check it out that he knew and then he found out i was in town he brought it over here to let me check it out but not only did he get somewhat lucky it saved him a bunch of money because i found out by looking closely time and belt and the water pump have already been changed he doesn't need to change the guy was going to charge him a whole bunch of money to change so i saved him a bunch of money on that alone it doesn't need it it just was done about 13,000 miles ago. And people may be saying, oh, the price of used cars, blah, 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 blah. You got this thing for like $7,000 with 75,000 miles on it in today's market. Don't poo-poo the idea of finding a Lexus with low mileage. A lot of older people like these luxury cars. They don't drive that many miles. That's totally Believable. My wife's Lexus, it's only got 80 something thousand miles on it to 2002. That's totally believable. We bought it from elderly people. We're elderly ourselves now. We weren't that elderly when we bought it, but it's lasted so long and we don't drive all that many miles. There are good cars like this out there if you check. Now, yeah, people lie, cheat, and steal about the mileage all the time, but now you know there are things you can check to see if it is the real mileage things that would be a flag say the suspension was all creaking and rattling and the steering wheel was worn out and the seats were all worn out from wear and tear then you'd know hey it's got a lot more than seventy-five thousand miles on it right look there are a lot of these out there because they're luxury cars and a lot of elderly people like a nice luxury car then they get kind of afraid as they get older not just them but the cars because after all this is an 18 year old car it's an old car but they're so well made the ones that made in japan with 75,000 miles this baby is barely broken in it's not going to have high repair costs for quite some time it still runs perfectly fine so if you're really disgusted by the high price of cars these days maybe spend some time looking around you never know what's out there the market can only charge so much for 18 year old cars they're in shape like this one is the age is immaterial with that low mileage it's sad but true they don't make them like they used to the new lexuses are not quite as solidly built as these older ones were everybody's cutting corners it's just the way that it goes these days and as the level of technology gets higher so do the repair bills when those things finally do break down everything breaks down eventually and it would be better to have simpler technology break to fix it than really high tech stuff because we all know with the real high tech stuff a lot of times what happens when it breaks? You throw it away and get another one. Fine if you're talking about a cell phone, but if you're talking about a $60,000, $70,000 car, I wouldn't want to be throwing it away anytime soon. I'd much rather buy one of these for six, seven grand and drive it for years and years. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.